the first win of the day goes to you because you, ladies and gentlemen in chat, could be the next CEO of Twitter. <laughs> Elon Musk is saying that he's going to resign as the head of Twitter and the job is up for grabs. Let's rewind a little bit though and ask how the hell we got here. A few days ago, uh, there was an announcement on Twitter. We recognize that many of our users are active on other social media platforms. However, we will no longer allow free promotion of certain social media platforms on Twitter. Twitter banned outside links to things like Mastodon, uh, Spill, uh, Post. Basically, there's a huge new crop of Twitter competitors that are rising up because they see that the finances don't really make sense over at Twitter. They see that Elon Musk is looking for the exit and they see this is their best chance to try and take some of Twitter's market share. And so rather than try to outcompete them or use their larger size to just kind of, you know, blow them around, they just uh, banned them. I've always had this, this thought in my head, which is that the acid test for any two competing economic systems is when one side needs to build a wall to keep people from escaping. That's the bad one. <laughs> and I got that from my hero, Elon Musk, who said that uh, about six months ago. And for the first time since he's taken over his Twitter, he finally had a pretty much universally unpopular decision because he finally got his biggest fan to disagree with him. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Beast. <laughs> Mr. B said, if you're gonna keep doing stuff like this, yes, yuck. All this stuff was banned, all right? And so even Mr. Beast, the man who literally wears Elon Musk t-shirts, is diehard Elon Musk was like, yuck, dude, this is bad. And so it was so universally despised that they walked back. They walked it back. Elon Musk went on a Twitter space and said, fine, post on fucking Mastodon. You can post on Mastodon as much as you goddamn want. This is a direct quote. <laughs> It turns out that he was only thinking about US rules, but in fact, the new policy about linking to competitors being banned was in direct violation of European Union rules. <laughs> and the penalty could have been a fine of 20% of Twitter's annual revenue. <laughs> so they walked it back, they walked it back. But Elon Musk was pretty upset about the whole ordeal. So he dropped this. Should I step down as head of Twitter? I will abide by the results of this poll and 57.5% of the 17 million votes voted yes. Now, a lot of people seem to think that he was surprised by this result. And my initial gut reaction was that this was part of his plan. In November, he said that he had already picked a successor. In fact, he kind of legally needs to step down relatively quickly because he is in the middle of a trial about his pay as Tesla CEO. Elon Musk is being sued by Tesla shareholders because as the stock goes down, he is paying himself $55 billion, a record high pay package. And so he said in this lawsuit under oath that he's going to be moving back from his time at Twitter. He needs, he's gonna step back because Twitter is distracting him from his role at Tesla. Now he said this a month ago and he kind of, because of under oath needs to make some sort of progress towards doing that. So he tweeted this poll and in my mind, I was like, okay, this is all part of his plan. He's gonna put out this poll. He's gonna say, all right, fine. If you don't want me, I'll leave. Then he'll leave, put up a successor. The successor will fail because the company is doomed to failure. <laughs> and then he can blame it on them. That's what I thought the plan was. But for some reason, he is not acting in accordance with what I thought. Because then he followed it up by saying, as the saying goes, be careful what you wish for. You might just get it. Then he said, nobody who wants this job can actually keep Twitter alive. There is no successor. <laughs> then he said, the question is not finding a new CEO. The question is finding a CEO who can keep Twitter alive. Then Lex Friedman offered to take the job. Lex said, fun suggestion. Let me run Twitter for a bit. No salary, all in. Focus on great engineering and increasing the amount of love in the world. Elon Musk said, you must like pain a lot. One catch, you have to invest your life savings in Twitter and it's been in the fast lane to bankruptcy since May. By the way, Marketing Monday has been <laughs> right on that bullet. I'll tell you that. We've been saying that since the beginning. Still want the job. It seems like Elon Musk does not want to give up the job or cannot find an appropriate successor. No one will take the job. And it doesn't seem unlikely to me that people don't want to take this job because he is saying that when he steps down, he will still remain head of servers and engineering. I will resign as CEO as soon as I find someone foolish enough to take the job. After that, I will just run the software and servers teams, which is weird. Basically what he's saying is, 
I will be the majority owner of Twitter. So I will have final say, but I will hire someone to be my boss. But if at any point this boss tells me what to do, I can say, fuck you, because I'm the majority owner. By the way, the company's doomed to bankruptcy, so you'll take all the blame. I will just run the parts I like. And if you try to tell me what to do, I'm the majority owner, and so I can then fire you, likely without severance. <laughs> I don't see why anyone who has actual experience running a tech company would have any interest in this job. He's being very clear and the, the finances are very clear. Like we've been clear on this show that the company is right now barreling towards bankruptcy. It does not have enough cash to cover its costs. It's, it's on track to lose about $3 billion. And again, uh, after his poll, I gave him the, the credit of assuming that poll was part of his plan to pawn it off on someone else. But then Kim.com comes out and says, I'm hoping that Elon did this poll as a honeypot to catch all the deep state bots. Interesting. <laughs> Blue subscribers should be the only ones that can vote in policy related polls. Good point. Twitter will make that change. So now he's gonna rerun the poll with only people that pay him $8 a month for a near useless blue check mark. Now I'm actually thinking he thought he was gonna win that poll <laughs> and is mad, which is crazy. I was at least giving him the benefit of the doubt that there was some strategy to it. So, you know, I'm going through all this, this crazy timeline of events, but as of yesterday, Elon Musk was in a Twitter spaces talking more candidly than I've ever seen him talk about what the hell's going on at Twitter. There's on the order of a billion and a half ish of debt servicing that's required. So we're talking about. So he starts off by saying Twitter has a billion and a half ish of debt servicing required. What that means is he took out a $12 billion loan to buy Twitter. That debt is on Twitter's books and they have to pay interest on that loan every year. 1.5 billion. We've talked about this a lot on the show, but he's finally admitting it, that that is a big problem <laughs> because a company that already wasn't making money does not have 1.5 billion out of nowhere. Uh, net cash outflow, if you didn't make any changes of on the order of like six, six and a half billion next year with uh, revenue. So now he's saying at current pace, <laughs> based on where advertisers are at, where revenue's at, where everything's at, that next year, they're going to be losing $6 billion, net cash out. Now remember, when he bought the company, it was losing roughly 200 million. I want you to understand that Twitter, well, I think it was a poorly run company. Twitter, with all of its millions of employees, all of its thousands of employees, and all of its offices, all of the stuff that Twitter had before was only losing 200 million. So it was not a great company, but it was survivable. Now it is about to lose $6 billion next year. That's like a negative cash flow situation of $3 billion a year. Not good. Since Twitter has $1 billion in cash. And then he openly admits that Twitter only has $1 billion in cash right now, but is going to be down $3 billion. Okay? There is no other way to say it that the money has to come from somewhere. Which is why it seems like he's been selling Tesla stock like crazy. Is he going to attempt to refinance the loans or cover some of these costs? Because again, if the costs don't cover, the company just goes to bankruptcy. The company goes to zero. I think we also got to get the advertisers. Wait, yeah. Wait. So now let's talk about the advertisers, okay? Because again, one of the big problems here is that revenue of Twitter has collapsed because many, many advertisers have left. And the truth is, though some people think it's entirely for political reasons, in fact, it seems like it's for uh, a variety of reasons, including one that Twitter is just isn't very big. So I've, I've spoken to a number of the advertisers. They're, they're, they're like quite reasonable. They're like, just show us an ROI that makes sense. And I'm like, yes. I agree. If I were in their position, I would also want an ROI that makes sense, especially when we're headed into a difficult economic time. So that's actually a good point. Basically, he's saying he's talked to the advertisers. The advertisers say, hey, this needs to make sense to us. He says that makes sense. We can't show you that. <laughs> ROI is return on investment. So advertisers are saying, hey, if we spend this money, we want to make sure that like we get sales <laughs> and he cannot show that. <laughs> Because for many reasons, first of all, Twitter has terrible ad targeting. Number two is he fired everyone that could handle the clients and like, you know, show them decks of their growth or anything. And then third is their, their whole ad system kind of sucks. The, the money's gone, can't find a new CEO. And to help it all off, the guy that hosted this space, hardcore engineer that loves Elon and joined Twitter. Yeah, he quit <laughs> immediately after this call. <laughs> because the, 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 it just, nothing is adding up. Nothing is adding up at Twitter. Elon Musk has been trying to explain why Tesla shares are tanking. Because again, at the end of all this, 
you know, Twitter was a uh, $42 billion mistake, but he's getting paid $55 billion from, from, from Tesla. That's what he's in his other lawsuit about. So it wouldn't have been a big deal if Twitter wasn't causing such a problem with Tesla shares, which continue to drop. And he's saying this is not his fault, okay? Tesla shares are tanking because the macroeconomic conditions are bad, and they are bad. He's saying the government is raising interest rates, all this stuff around us is happening, and everything's going bad, and it's not my fault. Tesla will, will bounce back when the market bounces back. Some part of that is true. Some portion of this drop is due to what he says. But the problem is, if you look at the actual numbers, it doesn't add up, because it's so weird that the Fed actions have impacted Tesla, <laughs> which is minus 41% from here, and not Ford, which is up 1%, or GM, which is up 8%. It's almost as if something else happened in mid-October. <laughs> it's almost as if right as he takes over Twitter, there is a big sustained negative downturn in Tesla stock. It's almost like it's doing damage to the brand. It's almost like it's diverting his focus. He's no longer promoting new Tesla products and talking about it as much as he was. Uh, and he's alienating people that you know, disagree with him politically. The real impact of all this has been the impact on Tesla, which is taking a way bigger beating in terms of billions lost uh, in value than Twitter ever could, because Twitter's not that big. This article also came out yesterday. The advertiser's exodus is accelerating. It's getting worse, not better. But at least you can get cool ads like this now. <laughs> buy your razors from a company that doesn't buy this whole hashtag Twitter boycott. Stop giving your money to woke corporations that won't advertise on Twitter, Jeremy's Razors. Yes, dude. I fucking hate woke companies like Gillette, dude. Companies that have existed for fucking uh, 90 years and just make razors and try to make a lot of money on them. Nothing more woke than them. It doesn't get more kick-ass than this. So yeah, I'm, I'm switching to Jeremy's Razors, baby. Uh, and this is what you're gonna find on Twitter now because all the big advertisers are, are jumping ship. One, because, you know, in, in tough economic times, marketing spend is the first to go. It's hard to prove that it works. And then Twitter is just like the riskiest place. It's the riskiest place to keep your money right now, so they're not doing it. Man who recently bought website for $44 billion infuriated to hear the basics of online advertising explained. If Twitter can accurately recommend tweets to you that you don't uh, explicitly follow, it can, it can, by the same token, also uh, show ads that are relevant to you. But so the way that a lot of platforms do ad sales and a lot of like purchasers expect ads isn't necessarily, I'm gonna give you these ads and I trust you to serve them to the right people. It's usually <laughs> almost the opposite where it's, I wanna target this group of people in this region who went to a Jiffy Lube in the last 72 days. <laughs> that level of micro-targeting is something a lot of ad buyers now expect. And like, it's a huge part of how CPMs can get so high on platforms like YouTube. Listen, but sometimes I, these actually, advertisers will serve entirely different versions of the same ad listen, to different can you turn this guy off, please? He's just talking nonsense. Thanks. Um. <laughs> Bro! Bro! Emergency clown nose! Bro, that is clown behavior! No, the, the guy was not talking nonsense. The guy was not even raising his voice. He was giving you extreme basics about what advertisers expect. As somebody who has worked in advertising and marketing at a big company, that is exactly what we expect. We talked about it on the show. You go into ad targeting and you want to find people that, that, that have bought GPUs or PC parts recently or in a certain age demographic or age range or... or you just want to be able to target them because you want to go for people that you know are your customers. Facebook does it incredibly well. That's why Facebook still prints money despite all the bad press and wasting it all on meta. But Twitter only barely was getting it before. And then he fired everybody that worked on that. He fired all the account services reps. He fired all the ad targeting people. He fired everybody but the core engineers working on the product. So there's not anybody left to do this part that makes the money from the advertisers. But I want to say that I don't think anyone who considers himself a reasonable person can look at what's going on at Twitter and not say that Elon Musk has fucked up big time. Even if you are diehard, even if you're like, man, I love the Mars stuff, I love the electric car stuff, um, I just don't think you can be a reasonable person and look at this and not be like, man, this guy fucked it up hard. He's made mistake after mistake after mistake and it's costing him and all the people that supported him a ton of time and money.